the remarkable fossil that radically changed our understanding of the human story. Indonesian archaeologist Thomas Satikna was nursing a fever in a hotel room on September 2, 2003, when a co-worker shared news of what turned out to be a once-in-a-generation discovery. Earlier that day, a colleague's trowel had hit a tiny human-like skull encased in 6-meter deep sediment in Liangbua, a large cave in the highlands of the Indonesian island of Flores that Satikna and his colleagues had been excavating since 2001. Satikna's fever immediately vanished and after a fitful night's sleep, he and his team set off for the site at sunrise. They were thrilled to uncover more bones, some still attached to one another, in the same location at the high-ceilinged cave. There were leg bones, hand bones, tibia, femur, grouped in there, in one context. Given the very fragile condition of the bone, it was not possible to lift it out of the ground, immediately, recalled Satikna now an archaeologist and researcher at Indonesia's Center for Archaeometric Research at the country's National Research and Innovation Agency. To harden the brittle exposed bone, he applied some acetone nail polish remover bought from a cosmetic store mixed with glue the team had on site. The team then brought the blocks of cut sediment containing the bones back to the hotel by minibus. Wahyu Saptimo, one of the field archaeologists who had first told Satikna about the discovery, remembered that they placed the blocks of soil on their laps, the safest place during a bumpy minibus ride on an unpaved road. At first, the team thought perhaps the tiny skull and other bones belonged to a child, but as Satikna cleaned the fossil at the hotel, he saw it had the molar teeth of an adult. It appeared to be a completely new kind of human, a female specimen with a perplexing combination of features that stood just over three feet, about one meter tall and would have weighed around 66 pounds, 30 kilograms. Now, 20 years later, scientists are still struggling to definitively place this enigmatic piece of the evolutionary puzzle. But the journey sparked by its discovery has led to revelations that challenge what's known about the human family tree. The team and its international collaborators knew from the start that what they had found was groundbreaking, and they worked hard to keep their discovery secret for more than a year so the remains could be studied in detail. When they released the results of their research, in two studies published in the high-profile scientific journal Nature just over a year later, the findings shook up the field of paleoanthropology and captivated a wider audience, making headlines around the world. Nicknamed Hobbit, the massively popular first Lord of the Rings film had come out in late 2001, by Mike Morwood, the late Australian archaeologist who had spearheaded the dig, the Liang Bua specimen looked like something from the movie's Middle Earth realm. The volume of its brain case, measured with mustard seeds smuggled from Australia through Indonesian customs, was around 400 milliliters, similar to a chimpanzee. The volume of a modern human brain case is 1,500 milliliters. Its legs were short, with disproportionately large feet, and its arms long like a primate. Initial dating of carbon in the sediment determined the remains to be 18,000 years old, which was startlingly young putting the previously unknown species closer in time to us than the Neanderthals. The dates were revised in 2016, estimating instead that the hobbit was 50,000 to 60,000 years old. The Liang Bua team named the species Homo floriensis after the island where the fossils were discovered. The discovery challenged the idea that humans evolved in a neat line from primitive to complex and underscored just how much remained unknown about the human story. Some experts in human evolution vehemently argued the Liang Bua bones were those of a modern human with a growth disorder, such as microcephaly, a condition that leads to an abnormally small head, a small body and some cognitive impairment. That assertion unleashed a fierce debate that took years to resolve. The team that discovered the hobbit disagreed and put forward two theories. Most likely, members of the team thought, their find was a dwarfed offshoot of Homo erectus the first human species to leave Africa and migrate around the world, the remains of which have been discovered in Java and elsewhere in Asia. The shape of the teeth and skull morphology were similar, though Homo erectus stood much taller. It was possible, the researchers thought, that Homo erectus had done what some other species of animals that live on remote islands have, shrunk over time in response to limited resources. However, the tiny brain case and chimp-like wrist bones suggested the hobbit was related to Australopithecines, small-bodied hominins, best known from the famous Lucy fossil, that roamed Africa more than two million years ago. 
This potential link raised the possibility that Australopithecines also once migrated out of Africa millions of years ago. Exactly how the Hobbit came to be is still an open question, said Chris Stringer, research leader in human evolution at the Natural History Museum in London. I'm on the fence on this one because I can see the evidence for both sides of the argument, Stringer said, and I think we really still don't know where its origins are. However, the idea that the Hobbit was a diseased modern human has been largely rejected, he said. The subsequent discovery of two other small-bodied and small-brained hominins that lived relatively recently, Homo nality in South Africa and Homo luzonensis in the Philippines, and the much larger Denisovans has led to a wider acceptance among paleoanthropologists that there have been many, diverse species of human, including several that coexisted with our own species, Homo sapiens. Before the discovery of the Hobbit, many experts in human evolution thought essentially only one species of human had evolved through time, with regional variation. Matt Tachery, Canada Research Chair in Human Origins at Lakehead University in Thunder Bay, Ontario, first saw casts of the Liang Bua Hobbit around 2006 during a presentation on the fossils conservation at the Smithsonian Institution. An expert in wrist bone evolution, he was immediately stunned to see that the wrists more closely resembled those of an African ape than a human, an observation that swayed him toward the idea that Homo floriensis is more closely connected to Lucy and her relatives than a scaled-down Homo erectus. In 2014, a partial Homo floriensis jawbone and teeth were found on a different site on Floris called Mata Menge and dated to 700,000 years ago, considerably older than the original specimen. They were similar in size, if not smaller, than those found in Liang Bua, suggesting that the Flores hobbits had acquired their extremely small body size by that early point, working against the idea that the hobbits were evolutionary dwarfs of some kind. However, other experts argue that dwarfism could have happened even deeper in the past or on a different island. It's also possible, Tachery noted, that the hobbit's small stature is a result of sexual dimorphism, when the two sexes have different physical characteristics. The working hypothesis is that the Liang Bua hobbit is female because of the broader shape of its pelvis, and it's not clear what a male hobbit might have looked like. While more than 100 Homo floriensis fossils, likely belonging to six or seven individuals, have been unearthed to date, there's only one relatively complete skeleton and only one skull, which is the most informative body part. To resolve these debates and understand more about Homo floriensis and its place in the human family tree, more fossil discoveries are needed, particularly in Asia. For example, Tachery noted, there are no known Homo erectus wrist bones for him to compare with the hobbits. Scientists also hope to be able to extract ancient DNA from Liang Bua. Attempts so far have been unsuccessful, but new techniques, including extracting DNA from cave dirt or decoding ancient proteins, could help shed light on which hominin the hobbit is most closely related to. Whatever led to its extinction, the hobbit's discovery teaches us about humanity's place in the evolutionary tree and nature more broadly, according to Madison. Tachery agreed. It didn't really rewrite what we knew, but it just explosively showed us that there was this whole other chapter.